everyone. Thanks for joining us on 207. I'm Amanda Hill. And I'm Rob Caldwell. It is hard to be a parent worrying constantly about your child's needs. It is far more difficult when your child has special needs. Tonight, Rob Nesbitt has the story of a getaway program designed to help those parents who need a little extra boost. And a little bit later, Lynn Archer from the Brass Compass Cafe and Archer's on the Pier in Rockland has a new recipe. She's going to show us how to make lobster tots, a dish that is simple, straightforward, and tasty. But first, it's been said that aside from his wife, no one knows Senator John McCain better than Mark Salter. Salter, who owns a summer home in Castine, has worked for McCain for 29 years. Not only has he served as McCain's speechwriter, political advisor, and chief of staff, he's also co-written all seven of McCain's books, including the newest, The Restless Wave, Good Times, Just Causes, Great Fights, and other appreciations. John McCain has spent much of the last year at home in Arizona battling brain cancer. It will likely be the last fight in what has been an exceptionally full life, one that took McCain from five and a half years in a POW camp in North Vietnam to the Republican nomination for president. Mark Salter was by McCain's side as much of that story unfolded. You started working for John McCain. Were you at that time? Uh, unusually impressed with him, or was he just kind of another senator and you were a guy who was looking for a job? I, I, I liked him personally, right off the bat. He's a very personable person, very demonstrative, very casual. Even the interns called him by his first name. Um, he was just a very relaxed, funny, personable, energetic guy that wanted to get into a lot of things. So he was fun to be with. In the late 1990s, Salter helped McCain write Faith of My Fathers. It told the story of McCain's father and grandfather, both of them admirals in the U.S. Navy, and of McCain's career as a Navy pilot who was shot down over Vietnam and spent five and a half harrowing years as a prisoner of war. It was his idea that I write it. It wasn't my idea. I didn't, I didn't pitch the idea to him. He, ins he insisted on it, and he was very generous to me with the book. I mean, not only do, does he give me, you know, equal credit, um, we split evenly the proceeds. and uh, Which isn't usually how it works with a co-writer. I have ghost written for other people too, and it's usually the industry standard. If you're a very established ghost writer, it's about 20%, not 50%. You'd known him for 10 years at that point, and obviously we're friends with him, we're close with him, but still, how difficult was it for you to capture his voice in prose? You know, I always joke that uh, the trick is getting the voice, his voice out of my head. When I was his chief of staff, I'd be in the office 60 to 80 hours a week, and then when we were in the office, he was on the phone, you know, so it's a, getting it out of my head. It's, you know, I'm not, um, it would, would, is harder than getting it in there. Uh, All right, Senator. Senator Hey, how you doing, guys? Good to see you. Thank you for being here. 2000. He runs for president in pursuit of the Republican nomination. He was running a pretty streamlined campaign, didn't have a lot of money, had the bus, particularly in New Hampshire, the Straight Talk Express, kind of living off the land campaign, an underdog, and rarely is John McCain happier in any endeavor than when he is the underdog facing daunting odds. Yes, that's his favorite thing. <laughs> you know, we've had, obviously this last year, we've had a lot of time to sort of reflect when you're talking to him, when you look back on things, and we, we, we still, especially the New Hampshire portion of that campaign, that 2000 campaign. We both look back with uh, very sentimental nostalgia. You know, it was probably the, the most fun either of us has ever had in politics. You know. He says that aside from Arizona, New Hampshire is his favorite state. He yeah. truly loves New Hampshire and he its does. people. He does. And uh, when he won it the second time, when he won the New Hampshire primary in 2008 for the second time, he just, he just, um, he turned to his wife, I remember it, he said, these people have been so good to me. 2008, he runs for the president again. Yeah. He wanted, as you write in The Restless Wave, to choose Joe Lieberman as his Republican vice presidential candidate. Joe Lieberman had been the Democratic vice presidential candidate eight years ago. What did you, as one of his top aides, think of that idea? We, we, well. I mean, we all know and admire Senator Lieberman, so all of his senior staff liked the idea of it. We just thought it was impractical. Reluctantly, we, we, we um, persuaded him that he couldn't do it. He regrets that. 
He writes that in the book. This is one of his major regrets yeah. in politics, maybe even in life, is that he didn't go with his gut, as he puts it, and choose the person he really wanted. Yeah, he does. Um, he uh, has told us many times, uh, in more colorful language than I use, well, I don't know why I listen to you. <laughs> Do you think the outcome would have been different if he had chosen Joe Lieberman rather than Sarah Palin? Um, no, I think we would have lost anyway. In The Restless Wave, McCain writes at length about the decline of civility and cooperation in Congress and about how much he enjoyed working with and fighting with a liberal Democratic senator who became his good friend, Ted Kennedy. Much of the time they spent brawling with each other, um, fighting, and, and his argument was you can come here with strong opinions and you can fight like hell on the floor of the Senate, but at the end of the day, we have, we have a mutual responsibility to make some kind of progress on the problems that our country is confronting. There, there is a, a segment of the party in Congress now that believes it's some kind of moral failing to cooperate to an extent with people who believe differently than you do on the issues of the day, uh, and that we would rather do nothing than do something that isn't 100% the way you want it. You can't govern that way. You can't get anything done. No Republican in Congress has criticized President Trump more sharply than John McCain. We're going to bring you more of our conversation with Mark Salter, and you'll hear, you will hear what Senator McCain and Mark Salter think of Donald Trump's warm comments about Vladimir Putin and his dismissive attitude toward the U.S.'s European allies. They do not mince words. That is tomorrow here on 207. Really interesting conversation. All right, when we come back, a place where a hardworking parent is given a day of luxury. That story next on 207.